This episode is brought to you by Novilla Mattresses. Are you single but planning on having another person in your bed now that the world is returning to normal? Well, to my knowledge, it is important that your bed isn't uncomfortable. However, you don't want to break the bank in the process of buying a new bed. That's why I sleep on a mattress made by Novilla. Meet their Bliss Organic Memory Foam Mattress, perfect for those who want a cool, dry, undisturbed sleep throughout the night, made with organic bamboo charcoal fiber, excellent motion isolation, cooling gel-infused memory foam, fits all bed frames, and reasonably priced between $179 and $369. Perfect for if you want an inexpensive mattress for you, your children, or even for your guest room. Using promo code SHWEEZY or the link in our description, you can save 10% on any purchase through Novilla directly. Again, that's 10% off using promo code SHWEEZY. A reminder that when you use our links and promos, you directly support this show. What is going on, my fellow Schwoke Lords? What is up? Welcome to the 50th episode of Cancel Sweezy. For those of you who don't know, I am your host. <laughs> and I'm here today to bring you enlightenment and a lifestyle choice that you are now going to be a part of. So thank you so much uh, for now being a part of this lifestyle. I'm very appreciative that you have decided to click on it. For the 50th time, I'm assuming that you've listened to all 50 episodes, even the first couple where I was trying to figure shit out, figure out what I was doing with this show. You've you made it. We're 50 episodes deep now. You're we're half a, a not a century. We're half a hundred years podcast old. Every podcast is a year of someone's life. And uh, I am now 50, according to this podcast and with that being said welcome to the show everyone welcome boys and girls and the they thems and uh the not and the alien creatures like whatever uh frank is frank is just an idiot um i think that's gonna be the best term to describe frank but anyways welcome to the show today i just wanted to mention uh a couple things like you know i'm daddy <laughs> And uh, another thing, um, if you uh, if you have ladybugs, can anybody tell me what can I do with these ladybugs? Um, then um, a couple things uh, you can do. One, uh, I do have uh, my newest, newest of the new uh, that came out back in June, uh, EP Ride or Die Volume Two, which is out now, available wherever you stream your music at, which is really cool. Just making sure everything's getting recorded. Um, so go check that out wherever you stream your music. That could be Spotify. That could be Apple. That could be uh, Tidal. That could be YouTube. That could be Amazon. That could be Deezer. It's there. It's there, and guess what? And I really like that. So uh, that's something you should definitely learn that... Uh, I like that. So uh, don't be stingy. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. I'm just really hitting the soundboard just ultimately hard right now. Um and, uh, Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. So, uh, yeah, so go check that out. Go stream it everywhere. I just always wanted to bring that up because it's still on there. Every week, it'll stay up there, and it's going to stay on there because you know what? I like that. So um, even more more than so, uh, yeah. Um, and if you also just want to keep up with everything I'm doing, you can always hit me up on all the social media platforms, social media being uh, anything from uh, – Instagram to Facebook, uh, TikTok. I'm on TikTok. Everything at the Schweezy. Great place to go check me out. Frank is here, so I'm just going to ignore him and hopefully he goes away and just goes to goes back to sleep. Of course, I hit. Yep, it looks like he's going back to sleep, so that's good. Uh, don't pay attention to him and he will go away. That's the that's the goal. Don't say any of his favorite words, or else uh, he will pay attention. He's going to go back to sleep. Thank God. Uh, I didn't know if I wanted to keep him in here. But anyways, yeah, go check that out. Um, also, you can check me out on Thursdays. I do stream over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Uh 
uh, over there, what you can go ahead and do is you just can follow me and you can hang out in the streams. You can talk to me. You can ask real time questions, which is really cool. You can ask real time questions. I've been playing a lot of Fortnite lately. Um, it looks like, cause I think it's going to be our Halloween stream. What I'm going to go ahead and do is, uh, I am planning on streaming, uh, five nights at Freddy's or whatever. I believe the game is called, uh, what I will do with that, um, Playing that, uh, Five Night at Freddy's, I'm like, this dog is distracting me. Uh, <laughs> um, what I'm going to be, I'm just going to see if I get genuinely scared. I'm like, I'm wanting to look up some things, but at the same time, I don't. Um, and uh, I'm going to push the dog away because he has no place to sit. Uh, I'm going to, but no, I'm going to see if I can genuinely get scared. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to look up anything. I thought about looking up a few things. But I decided I'm not going to. I want to genuinely get scared or laugh like a psycho, like I usually do when I uh, when something scary is supposed to happen. And so um, and he's just running around on the bed right now. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be really cool. Go check me out there. I'm going to be streaming Thursdays, usually around 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and something great about Twitch is if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can combine the two and get a Twitch Prime. Now, what is Twitch Prime, you may be asking? Well, it comes with your Amazon Prime account that you're already paying for. But what it can do uh, with that Twitch Prime is uh, you basically can financially support uh, a creator. Uh, it's typically around a subscribe on Twitch. It's different from like subscribing everywhere else. Uh, a subscribe, uh, that's typically around like a $5 a month worth thing but with your twitch prime account you can get the, one of those absolutely free and uh why not support your favorite daddy, daddy. <laughs> so um yeah i don't know why you're not doing that so go support us subscribe over there help financially support uh daddy, daddy. um another way you can help financially support daddy, daddy. is to uh hit us up on patreon uh that is the 100 percent perfect way to say thank you for being a friend and uh, financially supporting this show 100% in the best way possible. And that really helps me out. So thank you so much to anyone who does. Uh, I really, I really love that. And, uh, uh, and I really like that. So definitely, 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 definitely hit that shit up. Uh, but in the meantime, there's always the free shit you can do. So if you're watching the show on YouTube, what you can always do, uh, subscribe to the show and, uh, you know, uh, like the, sh like the episode that you like, you know, if I do good on an episode, you got to hit that like button. It's, you know, you gotta, you gotta do, gotta do the do, you know what they say? Uh, do the do. And, uh, what you can do though, too, is I post highlights on the show all the time. Uh, so if you're, you have a friend who's like, you know, I want to get them in to cancel Sweezy, but I just don't know how to do it. What you can go ahead and do is send a highlight, one that you especially think is funny. I post them all the time. They're, they're coming out. Uh, they're coming up in May. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. We are not stingy with the highlights, okay? We are not stingy at all. So definitely go check out uh, the highlights. Those are a great way to say thank you for being a friend and show other people. Have them join my cult. It's a great way to do that. Um, I'm also, with the highlights, though, I'm also posting the Twitch highlights as well. Just me gaming, having a good time, just doing the best bits of that. That way, you don't necessarily have to sit through a two-hour stream, but you can still support Daddy. Daddy. Got to move the mic stand a little bit, or I don't know, I can move this a little bit. Just got to make sure I can hit this button Daddy. as uh, much as possible. Um, yeah, and so like, subscribe, share with your friends. It's a great way. You know, it's easy, pretty easy. You like, dude, this was hilarious. Uh, he was going over this. I was like, oh, dude, he went over uh, you season three. And I just 100% agree with everything he'll ever say for his entire fucking life. So, uh, and I really like that. You can do that. If you're an audio listener, obviously what you can do, uh, subscribe to the show, wherever you're listening to your podcast on Spotify, Apple. Um, but one more important thing you can do, um, you know, the free, we're talking free shit. You can give us a five star, four star, three star, two star, one star, and uh, leave a review. And I know that sounds like nothing to you, but it really, really, really helps the show on audio platforms when you do that. So uh, don't be stingy. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. And uh, go for it. Just do that. Just at least do the free shit. Don't be stingy. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. You got to go do that, okay? And, uh, you know, that's just me being really deep. Oh, my gosh. So deep. So, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah. So I think that's. That's all I have to say in regards to that lane. Uh, but anyways, let's get into the news. This is previous week right now. Uh, what is previous week right now? I bet you're asking. It's our 50th previous week right now. Uh, previous week right now is the news through the correct filter. My filter. 
aka the correct filter. And, uh, you know, it it's basically me doing the previous week, but right now. Uh, not yesterday, not the day before, right now. So, just get right into it. Um, this one comes from our friends uh, over at 7 News Australia. And when I say our friends, I mean we have no association at all. Uh, the Wiggles original lineup to reunite for adults only arena tour. I like that. Uh, the Wiggles original lineup are reuniting for another string of adult on, adults only concerts. Anthony Field, Murray Cook, Jeff Fat, and Greg Page will belt out the children's group's most iconic songs at arenas across Australia in February through to May next year. Watch the group speak to Sunrise about the show above. Uh, it comes after their recent reunion shows sold out uh, with frenzied fans snapping up all of the available tickets in just five minutes. All of those children who loved the Wiggles in the 90s are now adults who love the nostalgia and fun from that time in their lives. Original Purple Wiggle Jeff said the exciting news. Uh, this night is for the grown-ups and is a chance to bring back some of that genuine high-spirited liveliness again. We can't wait to relive those childhood memories and dance the night away to some of our favorite old school tunes. Original Yellow Wiggle Greg Page, who famously collapsed during the group's last appearance together on stage, said he's looking forward to the gigs. I might have to pull back a bit on the dancing this time around, though, he joked. Uh, the shows will also feature cameos from characters Captain Feathersword, Dorothy the Dinosaur, Wags the Dog, Henry the Octopus, and support from Polish Club, DZ Death Rays, and more. So one thing I would have to say is I think I'm a 90s kid. I'm a 90s kid. I'm a 90s kid. Uh, the, the dream of the 90s is alive with me, if you didn't know. So uh, that's something uh, I just wanted to bring up. But I think I m missed, I think I missed uh, the Wiggles. It wasn't, I feel like the Wiggles could be, I guess, because I'm at the tail end of the millennials. I think these are the older Gen Z uh, people who are Wiggles fans. So it's weird when they say the 90s, because I'm like, well, the 90s is, beginning of it is Gen Z. So... I guess that, yeah, Gen Z kids, they're adults. You can legally date Gen Z. I'm, I'm just making a point there. Uh, but no, I here's the thing, though. I guess, I guess I would, I would go to this just for the merriment. But at the same time, uh, they're singing kids song. You're like, all right, this was funny for like two minutes. And then you have to sit through the entire concert. You're like, I paid money to see this show. I am getting my money's worth out of it. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. So yeah, that's going to be the weird thing is like, do you really want to sit through the wiggles right now? Are you, or do you, do you seriously want to sit through an entire adult concert of the wiggles? Uh, this reminds me like when I was a kid, my parents apparently took me to see Barney live. And, uh, they thought it was like, they probably thought it was like a cool experience, but at the same time, I'm just like, I have to sit through this and then will the kids even remember this? Like, I remember the drive there and I kind of remember the show, but, uh, was it worth it for my parents? I don't know. Uh, I remember we went at least, so that's a good thing. It was like when we go to Disney World and, uh, they took us on the dinosaurs ride and I scared to death, and that's all I remember at Disney World. So, uh, parents, remember the memories you make with your children. Uh, the traumatizing ones will stand out. That's something you will always remember. So, uh, at the end of it... Come on, Mark, don't be stingy. Okay, uh, ooh, here we go, folks. Um, I'm gonna play this. And I really like that. Guess what? We have another Garth update. This one from the Tennessean. Garth Brooks sells out Ryman Concerts, promises a plan, a plan for fans without tickets. Garth Brooks says he's stunned at the demand for his two upcoming concerts at Nashville's Ryman Auditorium on November 19th and 20th. Uh, he might be the only one. Even at $250 a pop, it comes as little surprise that tickets for both shows sold out almost instantly upon going on sale Friday morning. On top of the historic theater being just a silver 
sliver of the size of Nashville's Nissan Stadium where Brooks' concert was canceled due to weather earlier this year. The shows were not sold to the Ryman's typical 2000 per capacity. By Friday afternoon, tickets on secondary market site StubHub were going for as much as $10,000 for a front row seat. As fans voiced their frustration on social media, Brooks hopped on his channel to share some encouraging news. <clears throat> I'm stunned at the number of people who showed up for this on sale, he wrote. And as happy as I should be, I feel bad for the people who did not get tickets. We have already talked to the Opry House, and we are starting on a plan to take care of as many as we can who did not get tickets. It's not clear what Brooks' plans are with the 4,000 capacity Opry House, which is roughly a 20-minute drive from the Ryman. He's no stranger to tackling and on additional performances to satisfy demand, like his nine nights of Flutter Leaf concerts at Bridgestone Arena in 2010. He's also charged admission to see him on screen filming a concert that was shown to ticketed audience at drive-in theaters across the country last year. At any rate, we should know that Brooks will definitely be on the Opry House stage next Saturday, October 30th, as he's part of the star-studded 5,000th Saturday night performance of the Grand Ole Opry. Uh, and I really like that. So, initially, I was looking at Garth Brooks news. God damn it, Frank. Shut up. Um... You're stuck in here, buddy. Um, one of the original things... I gotta let him out. Okay. So, you know, uh, when I originally saw this article, I saw, uh... Garth Brooks sells out Ryman Concerts promises a plan for fans without tickets. The plan for fans without tickets, I have to assume, uh, is where he's hiding the bodies of the people who are at that show. Uh, and I really like that. And uh, do you think Garth eats his bodies? Come on, Mark. Garth. Don't be stingy. <laughs> um, but no, um, but no, it seems weird at this point. Like he's still wanting to play shows and stuff like that. So he's doing smaller area areas because he's canceling the stadium tour just because it's a little, probably a little too much uh, to spread something that's going on in the world if you didn't know. Uh, but, but, um, I don't know. The Ryman is pretty small. Like, what is it? What's the capacity of the Ryman? Did it say two thousand person capacity? It does not look like two thousand people can fit in the Ryman. Now, four thousand people capacity at the uh, Grand Ole Opry. Yeah, that looks like it'll fit. Some Grand Ole Opry is pretty big. Um, but uh, anyways, though. It's just with Garth, he's just, there's just, honestly, we can't do stadiums. I don't know what the point is doing smaller venues, unless they're like surprise performance type things like that. So it's, a, it's just a little interesting what uh, what he is doing here. Uh, he's playing the Ryman, which you go in the Ryman, it looks small. Like, you're like, I thought this is a lot smaller than I thought it would be. It is small. Like, imagine your college, like, auditorium, random auditorium, you know. The bigger one, most colleges have like a bigger one. Uh, uh, it's it's that it's that size. FYI, if you wanted to know, it that's how big it is. So uh, basically, Garth with his tickets. Come on, Mark, don't be stingy. Uh, that's the that's the way it is. Um, anyways, that's my thoughts on Garth. Let's move on. Uh, this is from People Magazine. Daniel Craig says he goes to gay bars often. I don't get into fights there. <clears throat> That's rough, buddy. Uh, there's a very specific reason Daniel Craig has a preference for gay bars. While chatting with Bruce Bosey on SiriusXM's Lunch with Bruce podcast, the 53-year-old actor admitted that he prefers to frequent gay bars because he's less likely to get into a brawl with aggressive straight patrons. I've been going to gay bars for as long as I can remember, Craig, who has been married to Rachel Weiss since 2011, uh, said one of the reasons is because I don't get into fights in gay bars that often. Because the aggressive dick swinging in hetero bars, I just got very sick of it as a kid because it's like I don't want to end up being in a punch-up, and I did. That would happen quite a lot, he continued to explain, adding that a gay bar is a good place to go. Everybody was chill, the no time to die 
star noted, you didn't really have to sort of state your sexuality. It was okay, and it was a very safe place to be. Going to gay bars, Craig's added, also allowed him to meet women as they were also there looking to get away from the typical scene of a non-gay bar. I couldn't meet girls there because there are a lot of girls there for exactly the same reason I was there. He said it was an ulterior motive. During this conversation with Bozzy, the duo also reflected on a time when they went to a gay bar in Venice, California back in 2010. We kind of got caught, I suppose, which was kind of weird because we were doing nothing fucking wrong, Craig explained. What happened is we were having a nice night and I kind of was talking to you about my life when my life was changing and we got drunk and I was like, oh fuck, let's just go to a bar. Come on, let's fucking go out. We got busted for doing nothing wrong, and I just was like, I don't give a fuck. The moment where they got busted, as Craig put it, was when they shared a hug in the parking lot of the bar, which Bozy noted got picked up by the National Enquirer and made into a story it was a shitstorm in a teacup. Craig recalled with a laugh, Craig's last James Bond film, No Time to Die, is now playing in theaters. Um, why does it feel like... Uh, Daniel Craig is instigating fights anytime he goes to a bar. Like, you know, I know people like that. We're going to do a fight. You got my book. I'm like, buddy, I don't, I mean, yes, I have your back, but at the same time, I don't want to, why are we getting into fights? Uh, where are our enemies? Why are our enemies at this bar right now? Why are we setting up a fight to go on right now? I don't want to be in a fight. I want to drink alcohol and have fun. That's what I want to do. And, uh, in regards to getting drunk, having fun does not involve a fight. But I've also been to gay bars, not looking for gay men for gay sex, uh, but I have been because I have other friends who want to go to gay bars. M women like going to gay bars because uh, they feel a little bit safer there, which can be true. But then at certain point, if uh, the ratio of uh, straights to gay goes more straights than gay, then is it even a gay bar anymore? That's a good question for you. Is it even a gay bar if majority of the people in the gay bar are straight? Wouldn't it be called a straight bar? And that's also another thing. You don't call regular bars straight bars. <laughs> like you don't, like, let's go to this straight bar tonight. That sounds like fun. You want to go to a straight bar with me? <laughs> like, no one, no one thinks about that. Um, no one thinks about that ever for any reason. So, um, yeah, that's one thing. Last thing I want to say about gay bars is when I have had to go, like I'm like I'm forced to go. Um, when I have gone, it's one of those things that like I don't know if I like. You can't keep it in your mind. It's like oh man, I'm just gonna get hit on the whole time. But then if you don't get hit on, it's like what the fuck? Am I not good enough for these guys? You know, so it's like that that yin and yang is like I don't want to be hit on, but I do want to be hit on because I want to be appreciated for the man I am. And uh, sometimes you win, you lose, you sing the blues. There's no point in buying concrete shoes. Uh, sometimes it is what it is, and uh, this is the type of guy you get. So uh, yeah, that's how I will end uh, the conversation about the gay bars. Um, last but not least. Um, on our docket today from our friends over at page six. And like I said, when I said friends, I mean no association at all. Uh, SNL producers scrambling to replace Ed Sheeran amid COVID-19 diagnosis. Ed Sheeran's COVID-19 diagnosis has put a damper on Saturday Night Night Live. The singer was scheduled to appear on the November 6th show announced via Instagram on Sunday that he tested positive for the coronavirus. Now, SNL producers are scrambling to find a replacement, Page Six has learned. A source tells us that Sheeran 30 will not be allowed into the U.S. with a positive COVID-19 test. They're looking to replace him with another singer who appeals to the same demo. Uh, the source says someone like Shawn Mendes or Justin Bieber. According to The Insider, there's also a chance SNL now could let Sheeran perform remotely, though that has yet to be decided. Ed is offering to perform live via video link, but this isn't something SNL does. The source told us the show like show likes to have the performer in studio. 
A rep for Sheeran did not immediately respond to Page Six's request for comment. Earlier Sunday, Sheeran broke the news of his diagnosis to his fans on Instagram, writing, Hey guys, quick note to tell you that I've sadly tested positive for COVID, so I'm now self-isolating and following government guidelines. He continued, I'm now unable to plow ahead with any in-person commitments for now, so I'll be doing as many of my planned interviews slash performances I can from my house, he explained. Apologies to anyone I've let down. Be safe, everyone. X. Uh, Sheeran's fourth studio album, pronounced Equals, is still expected for a release on October 29th. So, um, this is very interesting, you know, um, I like, you know, like I said, I like Ed Sheeran's music, um, I, it's progressively, uh, not as good as it used to be. You can, there is a decline in, uh, he's just not that, like, I don't know, that first album, plus, it's just pure gold, multiplies pretty good. A divide, is that, and that's kind of like, he's like, oh, I'm happy in love and content with life. And it's like, ah, now the, the struggle I like in your music is now gone. Um, but, you know, I understand, okay, first of all, I understand SNL being like, we don't want to do it remotely. That's good because it's just, now it just sounds like a mess. And it just takes out the whole Saturday Night Live thing. And I guess the re- one of the reasons why he's not able to be on SNL, uh, because they... Uh, I guess they, uh, especially everyone, they, I mean, they're testing constantly, but then they also, like, I guess with, like, musical guests, I heard this is why, like, Morgan Wallen's that piece of shit, uh, wasn't able to perform one time because, like, they're supposed to quarantine for two weeks and then come to the show or whatever, uh, and he did not do that because he's uh, a little bitch. That's why Morgan Wallen's is a little bitch. Um, but anyway, so I guess I understand that, um, And that's also another thing. That's why it's like, well, it's still far out. Like, he may not, he may be fine by then. I'm like, that's, there's a reason why. Um, But uh, I guess, like, yeah, they want someone with the same demo, and they want someone who's going to get people to watch the show. But I just think it's funny. We're scrambling to find someone to be on the show. I'm like, I know a lot of musicians who'd be like, I would love to be on Saturday Night Live. Uh, So just in my mind, that's so ridiculous to be like, we can't find anyone. I'm like, I'll do it. I have some songs. We can do that. I'm, I'm cool with it. Uh, will we get viewers? No. Actually, we might get some. 10 or 20. There's some people who just watch it regardless or they record it and then watch, you know, or stream it on Hulu. Do they still stream it on Hulu? I haven't watched SNL in a while. I just kind of watch the clips. But anyways, though, Sean Mendez, Justin Bieber, or Shweezy, one of us three are gonna be on SNL, hopefully. And I hope that Ed Sheeran album's good, and I'll have to check that out. Um... Because, yeah, because what else am I going to do? What else are we as a society going to do with the news that Ed Sheeran can't be on SNL? Who is going to fill his shoes? Look at you. You were able to get your hands on a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. Look at how lucky you are. But you don't have any games to play with it. Congratulations. You played yourself. Well, what if I told you that you could play games for a fraction of the new game price? Well, today's sponsor, Gamefly, is here to help you out. You probably already know that Gamefly is the best video game rental service out there. Let's be real. There's some games you're going to keep forever, which for me are Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Zelda Breath of the Wild. Most games out there, you're only going to play once, then never pick up again. I know, I bought some games that are now just taking up space on a shelf, which sucks. That's where Gamefly comes in perfectly, because Gamefly literally is the best video game rental service out there. You can keep the games as long as you want, and when you're done, you just send it back, and then get your next game in the mail very quickly, like two days. And if you end up loving the game you rented, you can even keep the purchase from Gamefly and pay a used game price, which is a great price. Using our link in the description today, get your first two months of Gamefly for only $10. So start playing new games using the link in our description. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. Look at you, you fat piece of shit. Hashtag pray for Micah. Looks like you haven't moved a muscle in the last year. Why not try and lose some extra weight and work towards a healthy lifestyle? To do that, though, you are going to need some fitness supplements to get the most out of your workout. That's where today's sponsor, FNX Fitness, comes in handy. Losing weight? Gaining muscle? Or do you need the energy to do a workout in the first place? That's where FNX Fitness comes in. 
FNX Fitness is committed to creating innovative supplements of the highest quality that provide focus for a productive morning, energy to thrive all day, performance supplements to reach new goals, unique sleep and recovery formulas to support any sport, and healthy supplements to support an active lifestyle for years to come. I also really enjoy their clothing line that makes you look good while you work out as well. And another thing I love about FNX Fitness is that with every purchase, they donate a gallon of water to a child in need. Start working out smarter, not harder, by using the link in our description today. You can save 15% on your purchase, so uh, go save 15% on some of the best supplements out there when using the link in our description. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. All right, so one thing I rarely do, because I'm usually 100% right all the time, is uh, make a redaction to anything I said on a uh, previous episode. But today, I do have a redaction. Um, Nothing I said wrong, just something I wish I could say better. So last week, um, I answered a question on uh, someone asking uh, for advice. Uh, Am I gay? So let me reread the question. I have it right here. Am I gay? I have been in a relationship with my current girlfriend since we were both 16. She was the first person I ever had sex with. However, when I was 12 to 13, me and a male friend, also 12 to 13, masturbated off next to each other. To me, this was us experimenting. However, I jerk off more to gay porn, twinks in particular, than I do off straight porn. I have also chatted to young adults online as well. The thought of... Having sex with a male does not interest me, but eight hand jobs, blow job does. Uh, he and my girlfriend don't re- me and my girlfriend don't really have sex that often, so is this contributing to my fantasies? Um, so I initially said something on the lines of maybe, um, and you just have to figure that out on your own. Um, anyways, though, I uh, watched the recent episode of Your Mom's House. Probably one of my favorite podcasts, and uh, hopefully I'm trying to make sure like this show is not a ripoff of that show. Come on, uh, Mark. Don't be stingy. Even though there's a couple things that I copy from that. Like, uh, Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. And we both talk about Garth a lot, but I try to make Garth a better person. But uh, um, anyways, though, um, so they had Dr. Joe Court. Uh, now, Dr. Joe Court is like a therapist, um, and uh, he's a gay. What did I write in my notes? So he got into, like, a lot of details with a, like, TikTok of, like, men who identify as straight but have sex with other men. Let me just go ahead. I'll play that TikTok right now. Hi there. My name is Dr. Joe Court, and I'm going to give you reasons why straight men have sex with men. They're not gay. They're not bisexual. My whole um, specialty is with male sexual fluidity. And um, what I always say is that when women have a non-heterosexual thought, We give her wiggle room, but we fetishize her. When men have a non-heterosexual thought, we stigmatize him and we tell him he's not straight. False, wrong, I really want to get rid of this myth. I really want to get rid of this stigma. And if you stay with my TikTok, you're going to hear all the reasons why straight men have sex with men. I'll see you later. So that was the initial TikTok that he he put on. Like, he put out, and that's, like, caught everyone's attention. So they interviewed him. They had a whole back and forth. Uh, They have a whole story with him. So if you want more on that, uh, talk to him or watch that. Um, Link won't be in the description. Just FYI. I'm not going to put it there. But um, anyways, though, so it really got me interested. And, like, here's one thing he did say in the interview. Um, If I'm never sexual a day in my life, I'm still gay. Gay is romantic, spiritual, psychological, and sexual. Which, I don't know, that's super interesting to me. That, like, having sex, if I'm like, hey, I met a guy and we're having sex. And I'm like, let's have sex. And uh, we have sex, and it's like, that doesn't mean I'm gay. Uh, it's it's a super interesting uh, topic for everyone to uh, think about, though. Which is weird, because I I assume, I have to assume... That there are many, many women and men in the porn industry um, who wouldn't necessarily identify as, like, bisexual or, like, a lesbian, but they will do scenes, bisexual, lesbian, gay, or whatever, but they'll still do scenes with, like, the same sex. Um, I just, you know, I'm thinking about that a lot. Like, they probably still do it because I, I think... I don't know if men are 100% on this, but it's typically understood that women 
uh, in the industry are okay having sex with other women on, at least on camera. You know, it doesn't mean does. You know, I'm gonna break a lot of hearts right now, but porn isn't real. And the saddest thing is they're not in love with each other and they're not married. It's it's just it's it's fake. I'm sorry to have to break that for you, but so uh, sorry that that. Uh, I broke some of your hearts right now, but porn is not real. Porn is fake. They are fake stories uh, that are fake. That's all I will say because that is because it is fake. Okay, porn is fake. All right. So that's what I have to say about that. That's my redaction uh, for this week. Uh, any other questions? White people, white people. For the white people is pretty bold of you, little fucks, to assume that I'm not God. So just take that with what you are. Oh, okay. So I, I came to a conclusion the other day uh, that I want to talk about here on the show. So um, recently, fellow Schwoke Lord and daddy and uh, fellow ride or die, good friend of mine, really good friend of mine here in Nashville uh, and also in any other place. If we were in different cities, he'd still be a really good friend. Uh, TJ Marr, uh, most of you know him from the band Ghost Town Remedy. They suck, so don't listen to them. But it was my friend TJ. He's great. Uh, it was recently his birthday. It was his 30th birthday. So uh, he there was a birthday party at his home that was supposed to be a surprise party, but he figured out it was happening. So, uh, um, so yeah, but I showed up to that, and it was a great time. So, you know, there was, there was alcohol. Uh, there was smoking things. Uh, there was candy. They had burgers and hot dogs and s'mores. It was a great time, you know, a great time. Got to see a lot of great people. I, I had other friends there too. It wasn't just wasn't just TJ. I, other people I'm friends with were also at this party. So don't don't feel like it was just him. And you know, this is the type of guy you get. So I I was talking to other people. So it wasn't I wasn't like just hovering over him the whole time. But no, it was a great time. Steve, who also lives on their property brought out like a projector so we could watch like some movies and stuff like that. Uh, later in the evening, I put on kids of Whitney high, which will be my downfall. FYI kids of Whitney high will be my downfall, but he brought a projector. And so we could watch like horror films because it was still Halloween time. And, uh, we had watched horror films, even though everyone at the party wanted to watch, uh, everyone there wanted to watch Halloween town or Halloween town Two: Calabar's revenge. Uh, but Steve would not allow us to watch actual film masterpieces. He forced us all to watch uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and Evil Dead 2. So we watched those two um, less superior movies to Halloween Town. And honestly, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I think horror films are stupid and goofy. I think I, I, they're not scary. And it's weird that people get scared at these movies. They're like, Oh, Freddy Krueger. Ah. And then, you know, it's just, it's just all, it's just goofy and stupid. And, uh, you know, like it as much as you want the aesthetic or anything, but don't tell me that like the movies are serious. Cause I'm not going to watch them like that. It's they're They're stupid. Um, now I also want to announce there, I wasn't paying full attention while these movies were playing. Um, at one point, we all got up for shots, so we had to go inside for the shots. I don't know why. I was, there, was, there was lights inside. That's why. Um, and I was also on alcohol. I was on alcohol in smokes, FYI. So um, can't necessarily say I was 100%. My brain was 100% there. But even if I was sober, is my brain even 100% there to begin with? Um Speaking of, yeah, let's keep going. But, uh, so I wasn't fully paying attention, so I couldn't give you a breakdown of these movies. I was just watching stupid shit happen and be like, what the fuck? Um, anyways, though, one scene that I just, I could not handle. I had to get up and leave. I had to go inside, take a breather. This, this was the, this is the stupidest, the stupidest shit I have probably heard in my life. Um, I guess the character's name was Marge Thompson. And she said this line, I am reading it. I copied and pasted it from some website that does 
quotes or whatever. She said, well, the lawyers got fat and the judge got famous, but somebody forgot to sign the search warrant in the right place and Kruger was free. Just like that. I had to physically leave the area. That line was so stupid. Well, the lawyer got fat and the judge got famous, so... <laughs> so I guess we didn't sign the search warrant. Like, what the fuck did you just say right now? Those aren't excuses for anything. Um, if the judge got famous and left his position as the judge, he would have um, had a replacement who would have signed it any, signed it any documents. That would have happened. Um, the lawyers got fat, um... At some point, uh, and they would have information, and they would hire another lawyer and share that information. So that would also be the case. So the logic, um, you probably shouldn't think too hard about this logic, uh, but I did. Um, but thinking too hard about this can, um, is pretty fucking stupid because, um, the lawyers got fat and the judge got famous, but somebody forgot to sign the search warrant in the right place. I don't even know. Was it like a hick accent? Well, the lawyer got fat and the judge got famous, but somebody forgot to sign the search warrant in the right place. And Kruger was free just like that. Now, I know who you think should say that. Can anybody tell me what can I do with these ladybugs? Um, but maybe she won't be the one to uh, say that. Anyways, though, if the more I think about it, the more upset I get. I'm getting pretty upset right now. Hearing the lawyer, the, the lawyer got fat and the judge got famous, or as uh, Lena would say, oh, the lawyer got fat and the judge got famous. No, I can't do her voice. That's just impossible. Um, but you could have left out. What would, how would I revise this sentence that they said? Um... I would just cut out, well, the lawyer got fat and the judge got famous. Um, the sentence I would have said, somebody forgot to sign the search warrant in the right place and Kruger was free. Um, maybe I'll just say, someone forgot to sign the search warrant and Kruger was free. Therefore, Kruger was free. Maybe that. Um, Frank is trying to get in, but uh, sorry, Frank, you had your chance. You blew it. You started barking in the middle of my podcast. He blew it. Um, anyways, though, um, you know, Freddy Krueger isn't the worst villain, but at the same time, though, with these Nightmare on Elm Streets or whatever Freddy Krueger type situations, hopefully you hear him bark through the microphone. Um, I don't know if I want to binge any of these movies. Uh, um, maybe like the newer ones are more scary because of effects have gotten better. Um, but was I terrified? No, I was not terrified. Freddy Krueger, at any case... Tonight, I'm going to say this tonight, uh, as I'm filming this and recording this, if Freddy Krueger shows up in one of my dreams, I'm just going to be like, whatever, whatever, man, I'll just let him kill me. Because at this point, it's at this point, it's like, OK, I guess this is how I die. Um, or maybe this lady will kill me. Can anybody tell me what can I do with these ladybugs? She might kill me. That would be funny. Actually, I would. Per, actually, that'd be my favorite death. She just killed me. Stop sending me ladybugs. Um, that'd be something. And then, like, oh no, she killed. So, um, yeah. I guess that's all I have to say on uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. And then we watched uh, Evil Dead Two. Now, I don't think I remember a lot that goes on in this film. And honestly, I don't think I need to. Um, this movie is just pure nonsense, and I think it was made to be pure nonsense. But here's a big problem I had, and this has nothing to do with the movie. This is just my friends. Um, I saw Bruce Campbell in it, and I was like, hey, it's Bruce Campbell, the guy from all the Sam Raimi, the Spider-Man movies. And I was like, hey, and I remember, like, in my back of my mind, like I said, I'm not, like, a huge horror fan, mainly because I sit down and I'm just uh, mystery science theatering it, the whole time, the whole time I watch any of these movies, and then I find all the plot holes, and uh, it upsets everyone. I that, That's kind of the goal. It just upsets everyone I'm sitting down watching these movies with. Uh, but um, 
but I, know, I saw Bruce Campbell. I'm like, and I remember Sam Raimi did horror, used to do horror films. I mean, I guess that's his main thing. He did a lot of horror films, and that's why people think some of the Spider Man stuff is weird. But I'm like, that's kind of like Sam Raimi's like horror film style. And I'm really excited for him to do. He's directing Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. He's doing a high budget Marvel film. Another high budget Marvel film. Um, that's going to have like fit into like the style that is the MCU. So I'm super interested in that. It's supposed to be a horror film. Um, but not on that. So I saw, you know, Bruce came along like, hey, wait a minute, is this a Sam Raimi film? And everyone's like, no. So we watched film like, oh my God, Steve. And I'm just blaming Steve the entire time. Cause it is Steve's fault, uh, for all of us watching this movie. Uh, God damn it, Steve. And there's like people in the cellars, like popping out, come now here and like they're decrepit and zombie looking he's like no and then they're fighting off and it's just not it's just straight nonsense like i don't know how long this movie is but it's just pure nonsense uh through and through and i just say everybody who keeps dying in these horror films because they keep playing themselves like it's it's you know the tropes well i know the tropes and he's like oh let's split up so they can kill us one by one that's just a uh, smart, smart guy shit. Um, you know, are these emails any good? No. Um, anyway, so, uh, so I think just people are stupid. And I don't know if just these tropes didn't last for very long or whatever, but they didn't. And uh, they're pretty dumb. But then, oh, yeah, and the creepy ass seller is just like, and then like people die and they're like, oh, they're not really dead. It's a weird move. I actually might rewatch that one sober. That sounds like a lot of fun. A sober viewing of that movie sounds like a lot of fun. Um, but it was just straight nonsense. Um, and just completely ridiculous. But I also get mad at the very end of it, you see, directed by Sam Raimi. And I'm like, wasn't I asking this entire time if this was directed by Sam Raimi? You know, I could have just Googled it, but uh, I didn't. And so I was mad at everyone else uh, for problems that didn't involve me. So that... It's funny, and uh, I guess, wasn't there a chainsaw or an axe in the movie? It was something like that. And the, Oh, yeah, the chainsaw worked on... I think there was a chainsaw... One of these movies had a chainsaw. It worked on that first pull. I'm like, impressive. That chainsaw 100% worked on the first pull, and it's got me impressed. So, yeah. But anyways, though, um, I wa- I just wanted to talk about this. I just wanted to point out that everyone who gets scared at horror movies are stupid because these movies are stupid. They're fun, uh, but they are stupid. And I just want you to realize that you could be stupid for getting scared of these movies, being a grown ass adult. And I just wanted you to know that from me, daddy, daddy Sweezy. Anyways, um, let's move on to the last thing. So, It's time to scrape the bottom of the barrel. It's our 50th episode of Cancel Sweezy. It's time to scrape the bottom of the barrel. And I thought, mix it up slightly differently by doing a quiz. Now, I've never done a quiz on this show before, but let's get started. I got my phone out. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's let's just get right into it. So this is everyone is either a tomboy or... Or a girly girl. Answer these questions to find out which one you are. So, got my phone. I'm just taking a look here. Um, uh, first question we got here. Uh, what your go-to style? So, we got the dress. Now, I don't necessarily wear dresses. Um, I know a lot of guys are. If you look at Youngblood, he wears dresses now. Uh, which is cool. Um, Harry Styles does. It's not my style, and girls who say they're attracted to that are not. They're just lying. They're just like the attractive guy. Um, that's one thing. Casual. Now, I do dress casual a lot, um, but anyways, if I'm, like, going out somewhere, I'm not dressing casual. I'm at least looking presentable. That's just, uh, as a uh, friend Joe would say. So that's something. Um... Next up, simple jeans and t-shirt. Now, that is necessarily, uh, that actually probably is mostly my style. Um, And uh, yeah, that's typically, I typically wear jeans and a t-shirt unless it's like a nice event. Then I'll dress up nice, but like typically it's jeans and a t-shirt, maybe even like a button-up 
jeans or like short shorts, you know, if it's an outside thing. So be as next. And then there's I'll pass on these options. So uh, my option, I am going to go with simple jeans and a T-shirt. So I uh, click that. Next one, we have which object do you always like to have with you? Uh, first up is the cell phone. Now, I would say yes. Um, I do typically have my cell phone with me everywhere. It's basically, it's my lifeline to everyone else in the world. So yes, I will continually always have my cell phone with me anywhere I go. That's just, uh, so that one's probably the best contender, but we have to go through all of them. Makeup. Now, I don't think that's me. I'm not really much of a makeup guy besides maybe some concealer to cover up zits or whatever. But besides that, yeah, I'm not really, besides that makeup, uh, not really the one. Snapback, that's like a hat, you know. I don't necessarily wear hats, so, because I have nice hair. So, uh, I wish I could pull off hats like that. I just can't. I, I don't know. I think just the way I do. I can pull off beanies sometimes, but, eh, those are off. Last is chapstick. Now, I would say yes to this. However, I started using Vaseline instead of, you know, a regular type of chapstick. And I will say, though, um, unless I'm not drinking enough water, then my lips will get chapped. But now, like, I'm using Vaseline. I'm not using chapsticks that actually do uh, put some chemical in so it dehydrates your lips and uh, makes you put on more and buy more chapsticks. So I will say I don't really necessarily rely on much as chapstick anymore. I just put on Vaseline after I brush my teeth, which is a big cause of, like, dry lips and everything. So, in this decision, I'm going to have to go with cell phone. Next up, uh, what do you like to do on the weekends? First off, we have go to the mall. Now, mm, I'm not really a mall guy. Malls kind of just are boring. I'd rather just buy things online. Maybe if I was younger, you know, looking around at malls were cool. But, you know, as an adult, it's like, I'll just, I can just buy this on the internet. My parents, like, go to Opry Mills every time they come to Nashville. I'm like, they're going to the mall. I'm like, yeah, I know. They don't really have a mall where they live. It's just, uh... So, yeah, so you can't really uh, do anything else but that. So, um, fortunately, that's, uh, that's the way it is. Um, next up, we have uh, meet up with friends. Now, I have friends, and I like to meet up with friends. Um, and the weekends are a good time to do that, though most of my friends are in the music industry and weekends are always weird. We always do meetups. It's always like on weekdays or whatever, or maybe like Sunday nights or whatever. That, that is the funny thing. It's not actually on the weekends. It's just, uh, it's just who we are. That's uh, who we are. Then we have go skateboarding. I do not skateboard. I tried for a minute, but I don't. Not anymore. Uh, not, not me. Not, we, I guess I don't skateboard. Um... And last, we have go to the movies with my partner. Now, this one would be my number one choice. However, they had to put partners. You can go to the movie theaters by yourself, and it's acceptable. It should be acceptable to go see a movie by yourself because, you know, it's okay to go with other people. I will say that. But at the same time, it's okay to go alone because you're not talking to anyone when you're watching a movie, you're not supposed to be talking, especially in a movie theater. You're not supposed to be talking or interacting with anyone. You're just supposed to be sitting there watching the movie. And that does not require a second person. That is why I believe you should be able to go to a movie theater by yourself for now and forever. But anyways, I'm going to go with uh, meet up with friends because I feel like that's the most likely what I would do uh, on the weekends. Uh, next up. What kind of games would you would slash do you like to play? First one is sport video games. Now, video games are good. I play video games a lot. I like playing video games with other people. It's definitely a fun thing I like to do. And it's not just men. I play video games with women, too. And not for me trying to bang them. I, we just play for fun. So if anyone... It's not it's not like that, folks. Um, I'm just meeting some gamer girl. Um, so, But the sport video games is the weird part. Now, I guess the closest thing I would say to playing that is Rocket League, but I can't find, I haven't played with other people yet. Fortnite's kind of sporty. Um, let's just eliminate sport with video games. It's going to be one of the good, uh, good option. And then we have, does playing with my dog count? I do play with Frank, but not as much as I want to. I kind of want to get him fat, but it's hard because he's a high energy dog. 
and can be really fucking annoying at times. Uh, like I took him for a walk, and then he got the ball, ran outside, and then I had to go chase him. And then he was like, we're playing a game. I'm like, shut fuck you, Frank. Um, then we have, I don't play video games, but I do play video games. Like I said, you can always uh, watch me play video games, twitch.tv slash the shweezy. Um, so that would definitely not be me. And then there's fashion games, which, I mean, if Animal Crossing counted, it would be good. But, uh, yeah. So, in my indecision, I'm going to go with sport video games. Um, and, of course, it switches off. Um, we're going to go with, uh, yep, yeah, I guess it, sport video games. Okay, I clicked it. Um, and then, um, choose some shoes. Now, we got sneakers. Which, those sneakers look nice, but I typically wear Chuck Taylors, that's what I believe. And then I have, like, a pair of just, like, Nike running shoes I use. I'm just going to walk around. So those, this would be the best, probably one of the best choices. High heels don't really wear high heels. It's not really my style. Um, my style being a man. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Uh, boots. I know some guy, I could be into boots. I tried uh, boots for a while. I can't remember the kind. Uh, not chinos. Uh, but yeah, I tried these boot kind of boots for a while, but, uh, nah, I didn't, it wasn't really my style. Then there's slides. Um, I think if I had a pair of slides, I'd probably just wear them casually. Uh, but I don't own a pair. Um, I typically stay away from flip-flops. Slides are probably normal, but I try to stay away from flip-flops because it's just a sign to women that you don't want your penis touched. And I, no one likes that. So I'm going to go with sneakers. Um, and this is lastly, pick a color. So there's pink. I don't, I mean, that pink looks cool. White, nice and sleek. Blue, and then red. Now, channel colors are like this greenish blue teal and pink and orange. So, none of those are on here. Oh, actually, no, pink is on here. Hmm. But I don't like that pink. That's not the pink I'm going for. I'm going to go with white because my desk setup is trying to black and silver, and then my Xbox Series X is white and just throws everything off the color wise but i am gonna go with white i feel like that's more uh, a good aesthetic that i really do enjoy so this is the last hit let's see our results after i click it and it says hmm tomboy you like to live comfortably without all of the fuss of being overly dressed up or having to put on makeup your style usually consists of jeans and the biggest t-shirt you can find and you wouldn't change it for the world now biggest t-shirt you can find uh, it's typically meaning, uh, that's a fat guy thing. Th that's a nice thing for a fat guy. Um, but, uh, no. So I am a tomboy. We've confirmed that I am a tomboy. I am not a girly girl. I am a tomboy, which is very nice of me to hear that I am a tomboy. And, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I will live with that fact. We live in a society, in our current society, actually having to physically walk into a liquor store should be a thing of the past. That's why I get all my booze from Drizzly. Drizzly gets all your favorite beer, seltzer, wine, whiskey, and much more delivered directly to your home. With their easy-to-use mobile app, we are getting one step closer to never leaving our homes. You know, it's saying something when it is being praised as the Amazon for liquor. Drizzly is my go-to app for getting all the booze I need so I can do hmm, basically anything the hell I want. So using our link in the description today, you can save $5 off your first purchase through Drizzly. Drizzly has proprietary ID verification technology that it provides to its retail partners that allows drivers to scan IDs for more than a barcode to make sure the purchaser is over 21 years old in the U.S. and of legal aid, drinking age in Canada. Retailers on Drizzly may also have a minimum order or delivery fee. So, using the link in our description today, get $5 off your first order with Drizzly. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. Cooking your own meals are for people with proper amounts of serotonin, which is no one. Are you depressed and hungry? Well, you're still going to be depressed, but you no longer have to be hungry thanks to today's sponsor, DoorDash. If you don't know of DoorDash, they bring you food you are craving directly to your door. Even while I'm dieting, I still get food from Wingstop, Chipotle, and even Central Barbecue here in Nashville. I like that. 
Uh, with over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can get $10 off each of your first three DoorDash orders over $15 when you sign up using the link in our description. Treat yourself like the king and queen you are and order from DoorDash today. Again, that's $10 off your first three orders over $15 when you use the link in our description. And remember, when you use our links, you directly support this show. All right, so... Now is the time for me to give you advice. 50 times before I've done this, and maybe we'll do it 50 more times after this. Who knows? Life is an oyster, and, uh... And I really like that. So anyways, let's just get right into it, um, with our first question I have for today. How do I flirt with a guy? I'm a girl, and I have a crush on this guy, but I want him to be to get to notice me more. How do I flirt with him? I've never been in a relationship or flirted with anybody important before, and I don't want to ruin it. Okay, no age putting down there. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. It's not that hard uh, to flirt with a guy. Uh, just act like whatever he's doing is interesting. And uh, he will probably fall in love with you. It's not hard to get a guy to fall in love with you uh, if you do it right. If he doesn't and he does like you, um, then I'm not sure what to do with you there. He's probably not worth your time. But what you can do with... uh, What I will say you can do... um, There's one thing I saw on TikTok... um, if uh, you, if you even want just any man, not a quality, just a man, uh, go to any game store where they have, you know, like a Magic the Gathering type place. Uh, kind of go to the back of the room. There's going to be one table and there's going to be guys playing at it, playing with Magic the Gathering cards. And what you can do is just watch. And all you have to do is say, I've always wanted to learn how to play Magic the Gathering, but I just have no one to teach me. Then you will get swarmed by all the guys there, you pick the least smelly guy out of that group, give him your phone number, your Discord information, all of that stuff, and then just talk to him like a normal human. A few days later, he'll be like, I think I have something to tell you, but I'm not sure if I feel kind of nervous. And you basically got yourself a man, ladies. That's all you have to do. Will he be good? If he doesn't smell, he'll probably be okay. A lot of those guys are just nice. Some of those guys can be nice. Some of them are just annoying. Some of them are like, yeah, I see how you're, uh, see how you're single there, bud. But uh, sometimes that's not for everyone. But uh, how to flirt with every other guy? Honestly, just show them. Um, one thing you can always do. Now, you're going to have to read the room here and see if he's okay with this. Uh, put your hand on his thigh. It's kind of like the inner thigh uh area um you got but you make sure you're respectful obviously but uh, he'd be like what are you doing um kind of grab that area that's like a ooh, that's a nice area to grab that's it's like sexual but not fully sexual harassment you know uh but you gotta read the room and uh, be very careful that's one gay um if you really want to flirt with a guy we're more of a straightforward breed so all you have to do uh, be like, hey, I want to suck your dick. And that's that's like 100% the best flirting you could ever possibly do ever. I'm telling you right now, if you just want to flirt, I want to just be like, I want to suck your dick. And uh, be like, I think she's into me. <laughs> uh, that's the best. Women who suck dick are the best. I gotta say, you women out there who do that, so much respect. So much respect for you. Uh, and I really like that. So, yeah, that's going to be my best advice for you. Okay, next one. When is trying to be nice considered being a nice guy? Can anyone please give me the general definition of a nice guy and examples of situations where someone is considered as such? So, um, obviously, for those of you who don't know, the term nice guy is these guys, uh, you kind of you know them. A lot of them are neckbeards, but you can look good, too. You can be a good-looking guy and be a nice guy. Um, guys who consistently claim they're in the friend zone uh shit like that guys um who think that being nice to women means they need to suck their dick which i mean there's there's some truth to that but obviously no you shouldn't you should just the idea of being a nice person is to be nice 
uh, without respect expecting any reward in regards to this. So a lot of guys be like, I can't believe I held the door open for that woman. She didn't suck my dick. I guess they only want these Chad douchebags these days. I'm like, you're probably a dick to begin with, buddy. Um, you're just ugly and that guy wasn't. I mean, women do date dicks. They do. Um, but they're good looking dicks. Um, not bad looking dicks like you. Um, why is she dating that guy with, uh, who takes care of himself, has aspirations and a career, and why is she not dating me, someone who plays uh, Xbox 36 hours a day and uh, smells really bad and uh, has a neck beard and wears a fedora? Why is she choosing this Chad over me? I'm like, buddy, you got to work on yourself. And uh, being just because being being a nice guy, being an actual nice person, I mean, you're being nice to people without re expecting a reward in return. Uh, that's kind of the the general definition. For those of you don't know, you probably have seen guys who look like nice guys. Um, they do a lot of times have a similar appearance, but uh, and sometimes they're incels. Um, and uh, yeah, I expect incels to make me laugh. And I watched a documentary thinking it was going to be funny. It was not funny, folks. Incels are very sad people. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. You don't have to be an incel. You just have to really lower your standards. Uh, if you lower your standards a lot, then what I'm going to tell you, you lower those standards a lot, you will find someone. You just got to lower your standards. Sometimes you got to lower them a lot. But if you want to get your penis touched, you can. Just lower your standards. And uh, that will happen to you. But, yeah, so like I said, that's the definition of a nice guy. Um, and uh, what else can I say about nice guys? Uh, nice guys trademark. Got to say that. I think there's a little trademark there. Um, so, yeah, there's a certain appearance that you ex expect but not necessarily makes you a nice guy. Uh, it is the idea of... Uh, saying that yeah you know it's more or less being nice being nice or a certain way to women and expecting penis touches in return and that's basically the idea of being a nice guy then complaining about not getting your penis touched uh for calling my lady or my lord and uh i've only seen one or two good looking people say that and that was uh allison brie and uh Joel McHale on Community say, I'm a lady, my lord. Only, only people in existence who have said that, unironically. Actually, it could have been ironically. It was a TV show. And anyways, though, so don't be a nice guy. Um, be nice to people and women without expecting penis touches in return. That's going to be my life lesson for all of you today. Anyways, next question. My boyfriend told me he has a preference for white girls and I am Asian. What should I do? My boyfriend and me have been together for a year. When we would talk about what is our type in the past, he would say qualities that he found attractive in a girl, but he never mentioned anything about race. However, in our most recent conversation, he slipped out that he's always had a preference for white girls. As an Asian girl, hearing that made me insecure because I look nothing like a white girl. I also think having a race preference is weird and is different than having a regular type like tall, smart, nice, smile, etc. He has never actually dated a white girl before. All of his exes have been non-white, but he told me his ideal woman in his head is white. Am I just being insecure and overreacting about this? Should I let it go? First, first, first things first, I'm going to point out here to you. I'm going to be honest. There is a whole group of men out there um, who love Asian women. There is an entire subset of men out there who absolutely adore any woman of any Asian race. And uh, there's a song called El Scorcho by the band Weezer um, where he quotes these half Japanese girls do it to me every time. Now, we don't know what the other half is, but we do know one half is Japanese. And we're going to give you the impression that that woman did look Japanese and a lot of people listen to that song and be like I relate to this so there's a whole subset of men into Asian women and uh, 
I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, I'm not, I'm not against it. I'm not against it either. Um, but, uh, in regards to that, he, um, I'm going to say, don't feel insecure about that. He's why is he like, you have a preference for white girls and he's never dated a white girl before. Okay. Um, I don't know. That's, that's a weird thing. It's like saying like, I like redheads, but then you think of redhead and you're like, you automatically think white girl. Um, so like redheads, I mean, like, you know, a good Asian, an Asian girl's good. Um, you know, these half Japanese girls are great. That's a weird thing with men. It's kind of guys who have like a race preference and are very adamant about their race preference, uh, are a red flag and you should avoid that. But most guys just want you to be hot. That's all they really care about. And most guys be like, you know, there's some hot black girls out there, some hot Indian chicks, uh, and then you, Asians, and usually Asians are the hottest, are one of the hottest of women races. Um, that is, that is something women, Latinos can, are up there too. Um, white girls have their moments. Black girls have their moments, you know. Um, so yeah, um, it is weird. He has a race preference and he told you about all that. It's usually something, uh, men, you keep to yourself unless you have a podcast. That's the only appropriate time. Like, you never talk about your sex life with others unless you're on a podcast. That's the only time you fully talk about someone on a podcast. So that is that is a life lesson for you, too. But, uh, yeah, it's weird he made the distinction, but uh, most women don't. Now, I did see something. It was like, uh, do, do you feel weird? Like, do you, as a white guy, do you feel weird watching interracial porn? Uh, now, I, now, here's something. Now, I don't, with the women, it does not matter to me. Um, men, I would like them to be white, not for any reason in my head, other than I want to pretend to be them. And it's, it's weird, uh, to immerse yourself in the stories when, when you see a big black cock. Okay. That's what I have to say. All right, next question. Is this a red flag? Uh, so I, 29 male, started seeing a girl, 33 female. We have been seeing each other for about two months. She's great. She seems very committed. She's been in three relationships. Uh, we get on, we get along fine, but she still Snapchats her ex. They split up about three months ago. They moved their relationship too quickly, apparently. Uh, he was the first guy she lived with. Uh, they rushed stuff because of COVID. Uh, they split up suddenly. Apparently, she ended up asking him to leave because she felt like her space was being intruded in. You live together. That's going to be an obvious. They're still friends, and that's okay, but they make a point of sending each other a Snapchat every day. And I've noticed that sometimes they'll talk on Snapchat as well. She still has some of his things, and I think she might still be in love with him. But I don't know. What do you think? Yep, this is a red flag. This is a big, big old red flag, I'm telling you, folks. This is a big old red flag right here. Um, basically, uh, you are the rebound that she's using to fill a piece in her heart that was taken away by that guy. Uh, she's still, she broke it up too soon without really working things out or realizing it's over. Uh, she's still in love with him or whatever feelings they have, and you are just filling the gap in time. So that is something you should know, that you are just a, a time, she's using you, she's using you for time. Um, now, here's the thing, should you break up with her? Yeah, probably. Uh, should you get a couple blowjobs before? Yeah, that's going to be 100% what I'm telling you to do. Make sure you go out uh, literally with the bang. Dun, 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 rip. <laughs> oh, but anyways, though, yep, that's going to be the best advice I have for you. Next question we got here. I think I'm bisexual and I need help figuring out how to talk to my wife about it. So I've been discovering that I'm attracted to men, especially in the past year or so, finding myself fantasizing about being with a man. I think I may be bisexual and I feel like I need to talk to my wife about this. Trouble is, I don't know 
how to. She believes that homosexuality is a sin, and I don't. We both grew up in conservative Christian households. Hell, my dad's a pastor. But I have recently left the religion within the past year, and am now an atheist. She is still Christian, and although not conservative in many viewpoints, this is one viewpoint that I know she has. I think I need help on how to both start the conversation and what to talk about. I don't want to make her feel like she isn't enough or that our relationship is in jeopardy because of this. I don't want to hurt her at all, even unintentionally, but I don't know what to say. We're in couples counseling that doesn't seem to be going anywhere, but we're trying to work on our communication on our own so our relationship and marriage can be stronger. I'm scared if I bring this up or talk about it that it will somehow jeopardize the progress we made and I'll hurt her somehow. Can you help? So I'm going to pretend I didn't hear the marriage counseling part because that's going to ruin a lot of things that I have to say because because that can mean your relationship is not working out. Um, but anyways, though, how to bring it up. She, um, coming from an ex-evangelical, as I would properly be described, I could tell you it sounds a little bit, little bit, like she is coming through a little bit of deconstruction, but she's still gung-ho on the homosexuality is a sin. Where, to be honest, um, it does not, in anywhere in the Bible, literally, or if you look at actual translations, say homosexuality is a sin, the times it does, uh, brings up weird worship practices, and some could even determine that it's about pedophilia. But I am also not an expert on that, but I do... 100% believe that it was a misinterpretation that didn't happen until like less than 100 years ago, I think, was when they changed it or whatever. That's my viewpoint. So um, maybe have that conversation with her. Maybe try to convince her that uh, she is actually uh, wrong and uh, homosexuality is not a sin because it's not. It's just fine. Now, uh, being on a voice chat with a guy named Mark and telling him not to be stingy, uh, could be bad. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. But it makes me laugh, and so I will be okay with it. Um, so, see, the big thing is, I don't think, if she was, I believe, like, so, assuming the religion was out of this, what I would say is, if she, if there's enough trust in the relationship where she didn't think you were cheating on her, and you'd just be like, so I think I might be attracted to men as well. I'm not going to leave you or anything. I just think I realize this. Most people, normal people, uh, would be like, oh, okay, that's that's very interesting. I'm happy for you uh, that you figured that out. Uh, they'd just be, the only thing you'd be worried about if I was them would be like, uh, don't leave me. <laughs> I think that's the only thing, weird thing about that. So, um, that's me and think. So, um, she really thinks it's a sin. She's probably going to think you're gay full on because she probably doesn't understand or never met a gay person if she thinks this way or doesn't know him very well. Uh, that's what it sounds like. So, I think one thing you should do is if she's like leaning away from the conservative viewpoints a lot more, uh, she's probably deconstructing a few things. That's at least the start of a few little deconstructing things. So, I would, you know, do a little research on, you know, the whole is being gay actually a sin debate and, uh, you know, bring that up and have conversations with her about that. See if you can get her to switch sides. Not like that, but get her to switch, get her to switch sides. <laughs> um, or, you know, no, more or less, uh, change that view. So then maybe you'd be like, you know what? I think kind of, and then be, then eventually when you, if you can get her to change her mind on that, what you can do, yeah, it was very interesting. You know, I've kind of been realizing this, not that from, I've kind of just started realizing this, be like, this is a new thing. Just keep it inside until, keep it as like, a, this is a new thing. I think I might also be attracted to men and women. Um, but I don't think I'm going to leave you or anything. I just think, I think I figured that out about myself. Um, and just, you know, make sure you're confident and be like, I'm not going to leave you and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, try to get her to, to change viewpoints. That's going to be cool. Just kind of, Talk about, you know, I think being gay is okay. And then he's like, no, it's not. And then, well, well you know, if you look at translations in the Bible, and you're like, hmm, that's very interesting. I have to think about that. And then gears will turn in her mind, and things will change, and maybe she'll be a cool ex evangelical like the rest of us broken individuals who were broken by Christianity. Oh, uh, it, can, it could be you. It could be me. It could be anywhere in between. 
My significant other is into choking, and I don't want to accidentally murder her. That's rough, buddy. Uh, she loves the feeling of almost passing out and has told me that she doesn't want to tell me when she's blacking out because it'll ruin the moment. This concerns me because I don't want to end up having to dig a hole in my backyard. I do, however, not want to stop choking her because I don't want her to enjoy herself less during intercourse. So let's say I've choked her out. What do I do? So, um... That's rough, buddy. So yeah, this is what I think about all the time. Be like, you look, I'm not going to choke you. I'm not going to be the reason for your death. That's not going to hold up anywhere. Um, but it sounds like uh, your significant others, from what it sounds like, uh, you put here. What I can put down... So there, there, you could look up techniques where it's like choking, but she won't die. But she likes to black... She kind of likes blacking out because she likes it. Um, so, I mean, this is always such a debate. Um, maybe if you could figure out some way to record her, be like, I like being choked during sex. He did not murder me. But then that's even more suspicious because then you could murder her and, uh, get away with it. So that's the thing. You have to talk to her. You know, I think this is going to be a big thing. You're going to have to use the mouth in, uh, in order to tell her and be like, look, I like I like you getting off, but we gotta we gotta figure out. I'm not gonna kill you. I'm not you gotta be adamant. Like, look, I'm not gonna murder you. And look, if you die, there's no way I'm not going to jail. And I'm not going to jail just so you can get off. That's not worth it. I'm going to jail is not worth it. Now, dying eating a pussy that's worth dying for. What do we want? A pussy worth dying for. Do 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 do. What do we want? A pussy worth Dying for do 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 do. My soundboard is not connecting to the Mac, and I'm just gonna have to deal with no soundboard the rest of the podcast. That's rough, buddy. Um. Anyways, yeah. So that's just a weird gray line, gray area, in regards to getting choked during segs. So um, it's one thing you're gonna have to communicate. Be like, look, I don't want to kill you. And if I do accidentally kill you, there is no way I am not going to jail. I die, I die for you, but I won't go to jail for you. That's that's the that's a good thing to say. I, I will die for you, but I won't go to jail for you. And because uh, dying sounds a lot less worse than jail. To be honest, with all y'all here, die. I want to tell you that dying is wor less worse than jail. I'm from Tennessee, y'all. Yeah, y'all. Anyways, let's go on to our last question of the evening. Asking an ex-coworker out. I had a major crush on a coworker in 2018. Suddenly, I've been thinking of them a lot and feel like I should ask them out. Only issue is I don't know how to start a conversation. I don't want to be misjudged as a creep. Um, so that is a good question. How to not come across as a creep? Um, so one big thing with not coming across as a creep is respecting her boundaries and sending like a text message would not be uh, interfering with her boundaries unless you ask something really weird or like some nudes or whatever that would make you feel like a creep um basically in this situation you're trying to ignite a conversation with this woman uh i, I like i didn't even give me your genders and i'm like ah, i'm just gonna pretend you're a guy and you just want to start up something with a woman a lady a lady friend um Sometimes memes be like this reminded me of you. Um, sometimes that can backfire when you send people uh, memes just very random, like uh, two cows, both with the udders, so they're both women cows, uh, fucking each other doggy style. I'm like, this made me think of you. Uh, that don't do that. You only send that to Joshua Casey, author of 
uh, Track and Desire, A Journey After Swallowtail Kites. That's his thing. He, he likes that. Send him cows fucking to his uh, Instagram. I think it's the JM Casey. Just send him pictures of cows fucking because that is hilarious, folks. So that's something I would love for you to do. Um, but yeah, basically, he's got, you know, so memes, that could work, but it also could backfire. So be be cool about it. Um, TikToks you think are funny? Uh, I'm like, oh, oh, hey, I haven't talked to you. I'm sorry we haven't talked in a while, but this TikTok made me think of you. Something like that. Um, basically, you can't, I, I would say, don't start with the hey conversations, you know. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, yeah, uh, don't start with that. I don't think that one's going to work out. It was not going to go how you planned. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I would say I would just go, let's go full throttle. Let's just go full throttle into this uh, meme, TikTok, something funny. You know, you'd be like, ah, saw this made me think of you. Hope you're, hope you're doing good. Stuff like that, you know, and then if she wants to talk to you back, she will. And then you can continue talking, ignite something, ignite the fire within everyone, in, inside your soul, okay? That's all I have to say. Well, ladies and gentlemen and the they-thems, thank you for listening to this 50th episode of Cancel Shweezy. It means a lot that we've made it to 50. Let's do 50 more after that. Um, if you like this show, obviously... Um, one things you can do, go follow me on all social medias. It's at the Shweezy, uh, at the Shweezy everywhere that you do anything social media wise, follow me. I'd love to chat with you. Hit me up, send me a message, send me things you want to talk about. It's great fun. You can also check me out on all music platforms under Shweezy. Uh, that's where I post my music and, uh, that's a great way to say thank you for being a friend because that means... <coughs> You're listening to me talk shit. Um, but if you want to hear me talk shit live, you can hit me up on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.tv slash The Shweezy. Uh, watching me there, you can watch me play video games. I'm going to go Five Nights at Freddy's. And uh, going to do other things after that as well. Um, maybe more Fortnite. Maybe I'll start another game. Who knows? I am my own man. I can do whatever the fuck I want. This is uh, this is the type of guy you're getting into my soundboards offline. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, if you, like I said, if you do have Amazon Prime, connect that to your Twitch. That way you can give me the subscribe. That way, so I thank you for being a friend and financially support the show without spending any extra money, any more than you want to. Uh, there's also our Patreon page, which is a great way to give us money and say thank you for being a friend. Uh, we also, uh, there's also a free shit you can do. Like, if you're watching the video on YouTube... Like this video, subscribe to the show, comment what you thought on things. Um, then uh, you can also share uh, our highlights to your friends who want to get into the show, but they just don't know where to start. Um, for the audio-only listeners, uh, obviously, uh, you can share the episode too, but also give us a five stars and leave a review. Um, that's a great way to give everyone a, you know, obviously... Give us attention. I need attention. I'm like Frank the Bug. I need so much fucking attention. And uh, you do too. So that's how I'm going to end it today. Thank you all for checking out this episode of Cancel Sweezy. Honks if you love butt drugs. And uh, stay awesome. Believe it or not, Schweg is in at home. Please leave a message at the beep. I must be out or I pick up the phone. Where could I be? Believe it or not, I'm not home. Hey, you just finished a full episode of Cancel Sweezy. Thank you so much for uh, finishing the full episode. You made it this far, and I am super proud of you. Uh, if you want to support the show even further, we do have a Patreon page where you can financially support the show, keep us going financially, and uh, being one of the top-ranking Schwoke Lords that I know that you can be. And uh, thank you so much. Make sure you like and subscribe this video if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening to the audio. Make sure you subscribe and leave a review wherever you're listening to the podcast. Thank you so much. And uh, like I said before, stay awesome.